Well, hello again, old Cristobal. I think that's the way you pronounce it. We got plenty of rain from that little storm. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a uh, tropical storm. I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it. But anyway, it rained all day yesterday afternoon and all night. And the air is so crisp and clean and beautiful this morning. Makes the whole place just look look like a brand new area to live. I just I really like it here in the country where we live after a rain. It's just everything looks just so gorgeous, you know. It's quiet. I like that. And what it does for the tomato plants and the rest of the stuff is amazing. I I got some pretty good tomatoes. Come, these are uh, these are the uh, small cherry tomatoes. I planted them because the wife likes them. I'm not a cherry tomato guy. I'm a tomato man. I want some big old honkers, you know. And our, uh, as you can see, our cucumbers have really gone bananas, so I'm looking forward to getting some of those. Everything else is looking pretty darn good. All of my, uh, these are the peas that were grown by my our granddaughter-in-law. And these are the uh, Blue Lake beans, I think they're called. I need to get some spray on. Looks like some bugs been eating the leaves. Anyway, we need to get back out in the shop. We have a couple of things to talk about. Let's do a little bit of work on the Thunderbird. I don't know how long this video is going to be. God, every time I look at this place after a rain, it just it just stuns me. It's so beautiful. Anyway, let's open up the other garage door. All right, let's see if we can't get one of the calipers to go on our rotor. Well, I decided to try to dry fit this thing to see if it would get on there, but unfortunately, there's something in my way. I'm unable to get it to slide down on the rotor. I just wanted to dry fit it without the brake shoes. I don't know what the problem is. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll worry about that in a few seconds. Right now, I'm going to have to take the rotor back off. There's two reasons for that. Let's get the slide the cotter pin out. And... We'll go ahead and loosen up the spindle nut and uh, pull it off. Now, why did we have to take the rotor back off? Well, actually, there's two reasons, but one of the primary reasons is uh, my mentor, Brendan, and one of our good subscribers, Mike Michael, he said, you know, John, you should have uh, made sure, you know, to tell people that this surface here on the rotor and this surface here on the hub when you drew them together with the nut on the uh, lug studs, they have to mate and be nice and tight with no space. Well, you know, I'm thinking, well, isn't that like common sense? You know, <laughs> if you're bringing two pieces together and you're using an air impact wrench to do it, why would you want, you know, to have a space down between the two when you're done? I mean, I rattled it to show you that you don't want that space. <laughs> All right, I can't find my pencil, of course. Actually, I kind of get frustrated over this kind of stuff. You know, I, I assume that people have enough sense to know that when you draw two pieces of metal together, you want them to be tight after you <laughs> tighten the bolts up. It's just, it's just everyday common horse sense, you know? Anyway, that's what you want. They wanted me to point that out since I failed to mention it. Okay, I've now mentioned it, all right? For some of you young folks out there, uh, even some of the older folks, but mostly young folks, eventually, if you have an interest in cars, you may wind up buying a car that's been dismantled in the front. The, the entire front cap may be gone. You know, the guy may say, look, I got tired of working on the car. I'll sell it to you cheap. And you're really interested in buying it because the price is right. And you want to have something to do or there's who, a thousand reasons why you'd like to have that car. So all the pieces are laying on a, you know, a table in front of the car or, or laying on the floor around the car. And and you say, yeah, I'll take it. So you take the car home. You get it home somehow with all the parts. And then you begin to put it back together. And it's like, sheesh, you know, I can't find a book on the car that shows this or shows that. And I'm not 100% sure how to get this part back together or that part back together. Now, if you're lucky, you'll find a guy on the Internet that knows this sort of stuff. Or you may find an old manual somewhere, but it may take some time. The point I'm trying to make here is not everything that not everything that gets taken off a car sometimes is so easy to put back together. I mean, it looks logical, it, it might seem logical, but when you do it, it just doesn't work. So this this is an example I wanted to point out to folks, you know. And again, you know, a couple of guys, <laughs> you know, you guys got to give me some credit here, you know. For those of you who have been watching this uh, project from the beginning. You know I do things different than most people. 
uh, when it comes to showing things. I, I, I don't, you know, I may do something in one video and then come back in the next video or two videos later and say, nobody said anything about this. Why didn't you all mention this, you know? So anyway, a couple of guys came back with a criticism uh, on our last video and said, you know, you got this splash shield on wrong. Well, I know that. You know, I'm the guy that took it off. So why is it on wrong? I wanted this is very important for you to understand. It would seem logical that the you know the bottom part down here would be on the bottom and the rest would be on the top. Doesn't that seem logical? Of course it does. But that's wrong. And I'll tell you why. The reason I could not put the caliper on the rotor here was because it was hitting this plate. Now these are the kinds of things you have to reason out sometimes as a mechanic. A lot of folks would say, geez, I just don't know what's going on. I can't figure it out. You got sometimes you, you gotta reason things out. So what's happening? Why would they cut this out like this? Okay, and why wasn't it just round all the way around? I've seen them where they are round all the way around. And uh, so what this means is this is cut out like this on these splash shields to make way for the caliper. So what I'm going to have to do is take this off, spin it counterclockwise, to the air, this air, to the uh, cal, this opening here will be up here where the caliper mounts. Now let me get that done. All right, we have turned it. Now I ask you, you know, does that look weird like that? Of course it looks weird. You know, <laughs> if you were to put this on, knowing nothing about this car or any car like it that has a similar, a similar uh, caliper setup. You look at that and you say, man, that ain't right. <laughs> That's just screwy. Why would he, you know, this thing here belongs at the bottom or the top. Well, I just wanted you to know that just because it might look a little screwy doesn't mean it is screwy. Let's go ahead and get the uh, rotor back on. I want to show you, uh, I, want, I want to talk about one thing and show you another. Now I'm going to generate a little controversy. Okay. <laughs> There's one thing I should have showed you all. Uh, in the last video that I did not do. I meant to do it, but it just blew out of my mind. But anyway, it, it's been overshadowed by another comment from uh, our good subscriber, Mike Michael. Michael said, you know, I, I originally torqued this thing to 22 foot-pounds. It can go up to 25 in accordance with the shop manual. And Mike said, look, the way we used to do it was we would tighten it all the way on down till it was tight and then back it off a half a turn. And he thought that I should do it that way rather than torque it to the specified torque. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, that's the way we used to do it years ago. And you know why? We would torque it down and tighten it, tighten it on down and back it off a half a turn. We did that because I didn't know anybody uh, of the all my friends, the backyard mechanics. I didn't know anybody except maybe garages that even had a torque wrench. Okay, so what they would do is they would tighten it on down then back it off a half a turn just to make sure they didn't over tighten it and mess up the bearings. Now, I don't know, we did it that way for years. I always did it that way. But now I have a torque wrench and we're going to do it the right way. I'm torquing it to 22 and I'm not going to back it off. Now here's the thing I did not tell you uh, in the last video that I should have. I should have. It's Now of course it's in the manual and uh, I knew this anyway from having worked on cars previously, but it's in the manual. It says while you're torquing the spindle nut to the required torque, you should be spinning the uh, rotor, okay? And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and torque this baby to 22 and kind of give it a spin, see how she's doing, feels okay. I actually am supposed to be spinning this with one hand while I'm torquing with the other, but it'll work either way. Can bring it on down a little further. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's 22 foot pounds. She sounds good. Good stuff, huh? All right. Now, years ago, I will give credit to the old timers, you know, or the, the you know the shade tree mechanics, as they tightened the nut down without a torque wrench. Yeah, they would spin the rotor because they wanted to make sure they didn't get it too tight. But it was all guesswork. It was all guesswork, and somehow that translated into were into various garages, and it became in my mind. It became just a myth, uh, you know, folklore on how to tighten spindle nuts. Use a torque wrench, do it right, it, and you can't go wrong. Nicholas writes, attached are a couple of picks of my 66 Thunderbird. I bought it a couple of months back, and as far as I know, the car is mostly original. 
and unrestored with 74,000 original miles on the engine. The previous owner had gotten sick and the car sat in a field for quite some time, I believe around 10 years or so. It needed quite a bit of work and still does, but overall it's an excellent car and I hope to someday get it to show quality. I bought the car for three reasons. Number one being the color. I love the turquoise paint and turquoise interior. Secondly, I've always loved old cars and wanted to learn how to work on them. The third reason was that my grandfather always wanted to buy a 66 Thunderbird and restore it like he had restored his 1935 Chevrolet Master Deluxe, which I'm coming into possession of next week. My grandfather passed away in the late 1980s and never got to buy a 66 Thunderbird. Now, 30 years later, his grandson is fulfilling his dream car, and my mom and grandma couldn't be happier. The 1935 Chevrolet has been sitting in a barn in upstate New York, where my grandma lives. It's been sitting for over 25 years. I'll also bring back to life what my grandpa once did 30 years ago. Before we install the new caliper, let's do a comparison between the, the old and the new. Now you'll see this big old plate right here. Over here we don't have that. We have a couple of clips that are put in with a hex, hex head screws or some kind of a hex head bolt of some kind. These were put in with uh, 7 16 Now this is a uh, dust cover or something of that nature to keep, I'm not really, it, it, it's designed to keep the brake pads in and also to keep you know excessive dirt and water and crap out that's the way i understand it it really doesn't matter you know because these are gone now you can get these if you want to go with the original now underneath here is a uh, as soon as i take it off i'll show it to you there's a piece of metal that's held in with these two little ears sticking up through the metal and uh, there's one on each side to hold each of the brake pads in okay so what that means to me is the brake pads can be put in from the top down instead of having to take, take the entire caliper off. That's going to be kind of cool. I'm going to try it and see if they'll fit. But first I have to clean them up. But uh, this will be the, uh, what did I say this was? This was the left side. No, this is the right side. And this is the left side. So these will be the shoes we'll use on this one. So let me go ahead and finish taking this thing off and we'll look at the back side. But Max Thunderbird does sell these plates. If you prefer to get rid of these and go back to the original setup, I think I'll just go ahead and keep these. This is what's on the bottom side. There is a spring-loaded piece of metal. The other one fell out when I took the uh, caliper off. I just threw it away. As long as I had one, that's all I cared about. But this is spring-loaded. It goes up and down. Did I get it over here? I guess it fell out of the hole. No, I guess not. It's kind of a spring-loaded affair. See it? And it keeps downward pressure on the uh, brake pads. Let's see if I can fit one of these in there. And I assume they would go in in this position. We'll look at that. It does load in from the top. Now, isn't that pretty cool? That's going to make this job a whole lot easier. One more thing. Uh, you'll notice that the two bolts that hold the caliper on, one's shorter than the other. This thing here goes at an angle, as you already know from what I showed you. Uh, where that slot is cut out and that uh, dust plate back there or shield and there is a bolt down there and there's a bolt down there in the bottom and they will mount that way the shorter bolt goes on the top hole just like that it goes through a bracket down there there's a hole in this uh, on this thing right here a little further down and there's another hole in this one right here a little further in so once you get that thing mounted to where the rotor is in the space of the caliper the shorter bolt goes on the top all right let's get it on finally
Well, you know, old man Murphy had to show up sooner or later, again. And it's not a malfunction this time, but there is a problem. I can't get the bolt holes to line up with the, uh, where the bolt's supposed to fasten to them. You know, it goes through that black thing on the car and then screws into this right here, see? And uh, these are the right size bolts, everything's fine. So I dug out the, uh, the old caliper and I did a, you know, a minute uh, comparison. They're identical. I don't see any problem at all. I don't know what the problem is. It's killing me trying to get that thing up in there and trying to get that caliper, those two caliper bolts to go through. One here and one here. They're just a little bit off for some reason. I got to figure out what's going on here. But I'm kind of tired right now, so it's coffee time. Well, I'm getting nowhere trying to get these calipers to line up with the bolt holes, which would be this hole here and this hole here, trying to line up with the bolt holes on the spindle mount. And uh, they just, they're just a little bit off. What's happening is the brake caliper is hitting this, this splash shield. So we're going to have to take the rotor back off and uh, we're going to have to modify that, Brad, that uh, splash shield or dust shield, whatever you want to call it. I remember, it seems to me I remember when, we, when I first started digging into the car, the splash shield had been bent up pretty bad. But I figured that was just from, you know, hitting bumps in the road and rocks and whatever and happens out in the country. That may have been the reason they had them all bent like that was to create clearance in order to get, we're only about maybe a quarter of an inch away on each of these holes, but they just will not line up. And I've been at it for over an hour now. So it's time to remove everything and do some adjustments. This is the rear of the dust shield or splash shield. This is where the calipers is, hit, is hitting. I can't get it to go past that point because it's hitting on these sharp edges. These, these sharp edges right here. And uh, now that I've got the splash shield off, let's, and before I do anything, let's see if I can get the caliper on there uh, without the splash shield. Well, there it is, guys. Remove the splash shield, she bolts right up. So the splash shield or dust shield is the problem. Time to do some modification. All right, I think that should do it. I may have to wind up trimming a little bit more here than here. I don't know, but I, I'm pretty sure that'll do it. If not, not a problem. We'll make adjustments as we see them. And, you know, this is one of these times where... I could sit and struggle with this thing for the next three days trying to figure out what the problem was. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know why this splash shield is blocking that uh, the caliper. It didn't make sense. It was just off by a quarter of an inch, about maybe that much right there, as you see. Anyway, here comes time, guys, when you have to just make these things bend to your will. This was one of them. Well, fortunately, uh, I, I cut away both of these uh, edge of these sides of the uh, dust shield and I tried to make them look as uniform as I could and they both, they both look pretty much the same. The problem is, I mean, the bottom's in. The bottom is in, no problem, plenty of clearance. But on the top, check this out. I, I, don't wanna, I do not understand. I keep thinking, is there anything I'm doing wrong but I can't think of anything. This part right here is hitting against that splash shield even after I cut away a little bit. Now watch. See it? I'm going to have to cut even more straight down, maybe a quarter of an inch off, in order to get that thing to line up with that hole, uh, with that hole right there behind. Bummer, huh? By the way, we're doing this grinding uh, with the uh, grinding wheel on our on our bench grinder. I'm grinding it down and taking it over and taking off the burrs with the wire wheel. Well, that's it, guys. She's bolted up good now. Uh, I'm probably going to have to take off just a little bit more, though, right here. I want to make sure that has plenty of clearance. You know, not a gaping hole, but, you know, pretty good clearance. But at least she's on. So I'll go ahead and knock that off. I'm going to spray paint this. I'm going to call it a day. It is very, very hot out here. So until next time, this is John.